Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. If you have a do-it-yourself project you're planning, start your search for the right tools, the right building materials at A.G. Hines Company, right in downtown Knoxville, right on Hines Street, as a matter of fact. For more than 100 years, they have been providing home improvement gurus and major construction companies with everything they need, from small jobs at the house to big construction jobs. Think about that, 100 years. Your grandpappy, your great-grandpappy was going to A.G. Hines Company. They've done it. They're still doing it. They will always be doing it. A.G. Hines Company and aghines.com to learn more about the place where you should be buying your building tools and your building materials. All right, let's welcome in the next member of our panel to talk football. And I'll explain why in a second. Mark Pankratz. Mark, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having All assistant coach, former Division I basketball player. Good to have you back. Thanks. All right. Uh, we, there is a reason I've got him here, so we'll get to that in just one second. But let me throw it out to these guys first. Why Alabama over Tennessee? It has been debated here roundly uh, all week long. But you've had national folks. Dan Mullen mm -hmm. came out and was like, look, these guys were head-to-head. -head. If it's even everywhere else, that's what you go with, head-to-head. -head. Uh, all kinds of national pundits have said that. So why Bama over Tennessee? Don't, don't take the Tennessee lens off of it. Explain it from the committee's point of view. From what you, if, if you're looking at them and trying to decipher what they did, why do you think they did it? Because Tennessee had a one-sided loss on the road, and Alabama had two road losses against quality opponents on the last play of the game. So I think they're penalizing Tennessee for having a bad loss and uh, justifying Alabama by saying they had two close losses on the last play of the game on the road. Yeah, I think it's that. Uh, I think on national TV on the playoff ranking show uh, on Tuesday, I think they nicely said, yeah, we looked at the South Carolina game. I think in the room they said, man, that was ugly against South <laughs> Carolina, and that would never happen to Alabama. So with the records the same, and I think they honestly believe Alabama's the better team, so if they believe Bama's better and they don't believe Alabama would ever have happened to them what happened to Tennessee at South Carolina, they said Bama's ahead of Tennessee. And Tennessee and Alabama didn't lose to anybody the way Tennessee lost to Georgia. Either. As well, yeah. I mean, they didn't play the number one yeah. team in the country like Tennessee did on the road, but Bama didn't have – I mean, Tennessee had two bad losses. So that's – you weren't in those games is what I mean by that. In terms of mm -hmm. a bad loss, you, you lost the number one team. But in terms of not being in that game – you really weren't in that game. Uh, so Alabama didn't have that. I also wonder, Justin, how much they take into account because they say in the committee's website, which says a lot of stuff, it's all <laughs> contradictory, but they say we take into account what, who's missing from teams as well. So I think the Justin – I mean, think the Hendon Hooker thing could be an issue as well. I think that was an issue for Tennessee, period. If Tennessee been knocking on the door at five or six right now, I still think that's a factor. When you say this guy that was a Heisman candidate all season long is no longer there, that changes that team dynamically. But to me, uh, with the committee aspect, I don't know. My brain works like if these two teams have the same record and they played against each other, the winner is ranked higher. That, to me, makes sense, but that's – probably why I'm here and not in that room with the rest of the committee. Maybe you should be in that room. <laughs> well, and this is where I wanted to bring Mark in because you've seen another committee at work, the College Basketball Committee. And, the, and trust me, we all have questions about how they do their jobs as well. But it seems to me, and you guys can agree, disagree, tell me that's the way it should be, the way it shouldn't be. It seems to me the Basketball Committee has 68 invitations. And they look at resume and they reward you. It's like oh, you played these teams, we will reward you. You did this at this tournament, we will reward you. Where it appears to me that the football committee is like, we got four playoff bids, we got the New Year's Six Bowls to stack, we're not in the reward business. I'm not just looking at, well, you did this, so you're in. Here's your gold star. It seems to me they're more interested in who's going to make a good playoff game. Who could do, who's going to show up in these games and get blown out and who's most likely to get in there and give them a game? I think it's two different tactics. And now it's two different tournaments. One, the tournament selection committee is employed by the NCAA. Football committee is done by the college football playoff group, which is the conferences. So it could very well be two different assignments. I think it is. Mark, do you think there's a difference? Do you think there should be a difference? Do, they think, do you think all these committees should do the same thing with the same rep? Here's how you do it, A, B, C. Yeah. What's your thoughts on these selections? Well, things? I think when you're looking at 68 teams compared to four right now, I mean, it's going to be vastly different. The one thing I like about basketball that really disappoints me around football 
is the fact that with basketball or with football, all these other bogeys, we're talking about handing being out. Well, what about the guys that aren't going to play because they're going to the draft? Yeah. And so it affects anybody's desire to watch a Tennessee versus Clemson team, if that were to be the bowl matchup, who's actually playing in that game because they're bowing out because they're preparing for the, the NFL. Whereas basketball, all 68 teams have a chance to win a national championship. And so you don't see the best players of each of those teams bowing out to prepare for the draft, which I love. Yeah. Um, I do think the quad one uh, wins, or the, the, the quadrant scale at NCAA basketball, they have an actual – um, set parameters that they can look at of why they justify it. Still doesn't always make people happy. The 69th team is going to be disappointed yeah. just like the fifth team. Um, but I don't know much about the football committee and how they do things. I just know basketball, they do have the parameters of strength of schedule, non-conference versus in, that thing that coaches can actually prepare for in preparation for the season. One thing oh, go ahead. Well, no, football, we've, we've got it totally backwards because football <laughs> would be like, all right, let's choose our one seeds. We got those chosen. Let's do that now. Let's take our 215, our 314. Let's take these matchups where they play one game. They play one game against yeah. each other, and that's, that's our tournament. And it's just it's a totally backward system where you have a playoff system and a bowl game system where those bowl games become, like Mark just said, they're totally irrelevant now. Oh. It's a reward for the trip and for the camaraderie and all that and some free gifts, but you're not being rewarded for what you did all season with the game that you did. For years, the bowls said, if you do this, you're going to ruin our system. They were right. Everybody it's, laughed at it. I laughed at it. They were right because you didn't see kids dropping out of playoff games until the playoffs started. That was when you first started this thing where everybody starts dropping out. I'll give you one th- Go and, ahead. And, and, I was going to say, bowls are starting to do NIL deals. They've, there are, have already been a couple announced to try to entice the players <laughs> to come to the bowl games. The, the one thing I'll throw out about the football committee that I really hate, where I, that I wish they would do like the basketball committee, stop with the rankings. There is no point yeah. in doing the rankings during the season because all you do is lock yourself in based on who lost last. Now, Ohio State's going to be a, a, the, the exception to this rule. But let's put it this way. If Tennessee had had the exact same two losses in September and, were, and was rolling an eight-game win streak right now, they would have already passed out. You wouldn't be behind Alabama right now, I don't think. I also look at it, and I think Tennessee got hammered by South Carolina. They dropped them five slots. Okay, so part of that's on the beatdown. Part of it was this unranked South Carolina team did it. They're not good. The next week, Clemson loses to them. It's a close game. Clemson Mm -hmm. dropped one slot. You can't tell me if they didn't do the rankings and they just walked in today, all the resumes are there, the South Carolina and the South Carolina losses for Tennessee and Clemson, I don't think it's going to be a, floor, a four slot difference between the two. It'll be a difference because one's a blowout, one's not, even though they're not supposed to consider margin of victory. <laughs> no, uh, they consider margin of victory, just not beyond 21 yeah. points. Uh, well, there you sure. go. Well, and so <laughs> much, the yeah, so much of the preseason <laughs> rankings that are the most ridiculous thing ever are off of the bowl games where everyone opted out the year before <laughs> yeah. that we just right. talked about. That's yeah. a great point. And, and also, if you're in Ohio State, who was supposed to be number one, number two going into the season. Well, you're kind of taken care of all year long. They haven't played anybody. You know, they, as you mentioned, one you, good You win. hold that perception that surrounded your team for that part of the season. Yeah, it's not a good system. And the sad news is you've got a 12-team playoff coming up, and I don't think the system's <laughs> going to get any better. All right, when we come back, we are already over. So let's get more over with this next segment. We're going to talk basketball, Mr. Pankratz. Uh, And we've also got a very special Christmas gift we're doing here on the Sports Source. Stick around for this. I'm very proud of this. Uh, That's next when we come back here on the Sports Source. Miss an episode? Catch up at sportsource.tv or our YouTube channel. 